If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, T1 Glistener Elf here. I have another vintage brew I made up for you, and this one was inspired by Ross Maria. Now Ross invented the modern Phoenixes deck, the Drake's deck. And I'm taking the Drake side of it. There's actually a Phoenix deck in the box in the gauntlet as well. But this one just has Drakes. Good old Crackling Drake. If you don't know what this card is, congratulations, you are not a modern player. <laughs> That's what it seems like anyway. So it is a 4 mana X4 where X is the number of instant or sorcery cards you own in exile and in your graveyard. When ETBs draw a card. And it flies. So this thing is tough to deal with. In the context of Vintage, the fact that it's 4 means that it can't be bolted, it means that it doesn't lose to Abrupt Decay. Of course, Swords to Plowshares is more ubiquitous, I suppose, than those. More ubiquitous. But this is a really good card, and it's a 4 of, which admittedly may be too many, but I'm trying the deck as a build around this card primarily. We can also, however, have a few of this little guy. This is Young Pyromancer. If you play Magic, <laughs> if you play Legacy or Modern, you know what this guy is. If you play Vintage, you definitely know what this guy is. When you cast an Instant or Sorcery, you get a 1-1 Red Elemental Creature token, and it's a 2-1 for 2. So this is a pretty good card. Now, it's 2 mana. Crackling Drake is 4 mana. This could be the 4 of, and that could be the 2 of, but I am trying it out this way. Crackling Drake often will win you the game either the turn after, or... Well, the turn after that. It's it's decently quick, but it's also tough to deal with, and it draws you a card. It's one of those, when you're playing fair magic, it's a really, really tough card to beat. It's an unfair fair card, so I'm trying that out. Young Pyromancer has its own strengths, like, for example, if they happen to remove the Pyromancer, that doesn't mean they necessarily dealt with all the tokens as well. Unless it's, say, a Toxic Deluge or some odd. Now, we also have, this isn't technically a win condition, but we have three Dak Faden. So it's plus one is target player draws two cards, then discards two, so you can use it to filter through your deck, which will also build up the Crackling Drake. Minus two is gain control of target artifacts, so I would like your Blightsteel, or whatever from the Shops deck. This gives us some game against Shops. The minus six doesn't really do much, but we do have one Pyroblast, so... Oh, and we have some bolts, and if the bolts don't kill something, we still get it. So, deck fading's okay. <laughs> deck fading's pretty good. Pretty good. Alright, now our next card in here is... Well, okay, so they go together. There's Wheel of Fortune and Windfall. Now, they don't quite do the same thing. Wheel of Fortune is both players must discard their hand and draw seven new cards. Cool. Easy enough. Windfall is similar. It's each player discards their hand and draws cards equal to the greatest number of player discarded this way. Now these are both risky cards to play. Ideally you play them in a storm type deck where you can win on the spot. You cast these, draw seven new cards, and use those seven cards to go off. And these are really powerful in that context. In the context of this deck, they build up a crackling drag, or give you more fuel for a young pyromancer. You have to be very careful, very careful when you play these cards, though. If you play against Dredge, these will just make you lose the game. The Dredge player will discard their hand and then Dredge, you know, 30-something. It, it, can, it can be an unfun experience, to be sure. Uh, that said, this is so powerful, I can't not run these. Uh, feel free to disagree with me. I think that these are some of the most fun cards to play. There's also something that these cards can do, power level notwithstanding, one reason that they're banned is that you can be in a situation where you and your opponent have resolved mulligans and you play out your hand and Wheel of Fortune and the opponent is basically forced to take a mulligan if they can't force a will, if they can't counter it. And that new card, or that new seven, that new mulligan may be really bad for it. It may be unkeepable. So it can make it where you get to play the game and they don't. So even notwithstanding the synergy with Crackling Drake and Pyromancer, those can be good cards for that reason. But you have to be careful playing them.
Again, you can go up against a dredge deck, you can go up against a combo deck that can refill their hand. Uh, then we have Ancestral Recall. We're just playing with power. Good old one mana, draw three cards. Yeah, <laughs> jeez, Alpha was crazy. Speaking of, we have Time Walk. Take an extra turn for the low, low cost of two mana. Alpha was, Alpha was messed up and I love it. Man. Alright, so then we have our cantrips. We have good old Gitaxian Probe. Zero mana or one mana. Look at their hand, draw a card. Easy enough. This thing is banned in Modern and Legacy and Popper and Restricted and Vintage. And speaking of, so is Gush. Well, Gush isn't legal in Modern, but ta-da! So you can, instead of paying its mana cost, return two islands you control to the owner's hand, draw two cards. It's an instant. Shoutouts to Stephen Menendian for literally writing the book on that card. I know I mention that every time I talk about Gush. Every time. But Stephen's a cool dude. You should follow him on Twitter. Check out his book. It's called Understanding Gush. He literally wrote the book. Alright, so Brainstorm. Because we have a lot of fetch lands. Let's just find the cards we need. Da, 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 da. It's Brainstorm. It's a good card. Ponder. Uh, this Ponder in particular. <laughs> I have... Very healthy views on Merfolk. Uh, then we have four Preordains. Not that we necessarily need... It's not a combo deck digging for pieces, but it helps to find the few creatures that we have. It fills the graveyard for Crackling Drake, gives us more tokens. It's, it makes the cut, <laughs> obviously. Next we have good old Treasure Cruise. As quickly as we fill up the graveyard, and remember, the cards you delve away will still make your Crackling Drake stronger. It's not Enigma Drake. So, you can delve them away, it'll still be the same size. Well, plus one for Treasure Cruise. <laughs> and draw three cards. Cool! Seems good. We also have Dig Through Time, for doing the same thing for one more mana, but at instant speed, and instead of drawing three cards, we look at the top seven and pick two, and put them in our hand. Yeah, I think that might be a little busted. There's a reason that card was banned in modern immediately the next set banned all right then we have merchant scroll now this will go it's a sorcery but it costs two mana and you get to search your library for blue instant uh, and then reveal it put it in your hand so in addition to a lot of these gush brainstorm dig through time we're also able to go and get force of will as a four of of course of course of course we don't want to lose we don't want to die and then we have Mental Misstep as a 4 of, fills the yard quickly, works to protect one of these on the turn that they come out, even if you had to tap out. Yep, seems okay. We have one Spell Pierce and one Flusterstorm. These are interesting. So Flusterstorm is good against Paradoxical Outcome. It's good against other blue decks because you'll win the Counter Wars more readily. Uh, Spell Pierce actually does something against shops. It's not much, but Flusterstorm does nothing. Spell Pierce does something. So I keep both in. And yes, you can tutor with Merchant Scroll for the one that you need, but that's not really where it shines. I'm just playing a split to have both. Uh, then we have two Lightning Bolts, and yes, you can run more, and that may even be ripe. But a good old Lightning Bolt for a little bit more reach, kill your opponent's small creatures. It's a good card. It's a solid card. Then we have one Fire and Ice. Um, because it's blue on one half, you can search it up. Fire is a more expensive Fork Bolt, but it's an instant. And then Ice is Tap Target Permanent Draw card, also for one man or for two mana, one in blue. Now we also have some weird cards in here. We have Pyroblast. Because the format is so blue that Pyroblast can be a mainboard card. In a similar way that Null Rod can be a mainboard card, which Null Rod could also go in here. Uh, however, it also has a, a, bit of a, a bit of utility with Dak Faden because of the ult. You can ult Pyroblast is counter target spell if it is blue, or destroy target permanent if it is blue. The way that that's worded, you can target something even if it's not blue, and you'll get to take it. Bolt can do the same thing. Even if you don't kill the card, you can take it with Lightning Bolt. Uh, you have Ancient Grudge, just as a one of. It is a uh, two mana destroy target artifact, flashback for green. 
And as you can imagine, that means we're going to be running some good old green lands, some green duels. Uh, but for right now, we have, you know, in our Moxin, we have Black Lotus. Or no, Moxin. Getting a little bit ahead of myself. Our artifact power, we have Black Lotus, and then we have Mox Sapphire and Mox Ruby. There they are. Shoutouts to you. We have Volcanic Island times 4, and Tropical Island times 2. You actually, in Game 1, don't have to go after Trops. Maybe don't even try to go for them. And the reason is because you want to hide that you have the green mana for something like Ancient Grudge. If the opponent only ever sees this, they may not know to play around that. Uh, but that's just, that's just what I'm doing. And then we also have three islands and a mountain for our basics. And because we're running both basic island and basic mountain, even if it's just as a one of, our fetch lands will start off with four scalding tarns, and then four other blue land, blue fetch lands. Your choice, it doesn't actually matter. I go, say, one, two, and one. I maybe should have made one of the Misty Rainforest into a Polluted Delta or a Flooded Strand, because I think that they see more play, and if your opponent goes Sorcerer Spyglass, they're more likely to name what they think might be more prevalent. That said, they could also name Scalding Tarrant, and you can't not play the four because you have both basics. Now for the sideboard, here we are. I have one more copy of Ancient Grudge, as you do, just in case we're running against shops. We have Blood Moon, which is uh, interesting. I've I've wavered back and forth on this. It doesn't really hurt us. We have three basic islands. We have a Moxon, uh, but it can be a thing, kind of. There are some decks that just have a really tough time beating Blood Moon, and so I'm trying it out. We have by force even better against shops. It also gets around Chalice, so that's that's nice. Destroy X target permanents. Not that we're fast enough to make too much use of that. We have Energy Flux as a three of. This could very well be, I mean, more Null Rods, but I'm trying it out. It's blue, so it pitches to force, and it, I think it's usually harder for them to be. That said, because of how strong Paradox Glaucum is, I might be going down to one here and be going to three Null Rods instead. Maybe that's correct. Uh, we also have a Hercules Recall. So, you know, Paradoxal Outcome they cast it in response to Hercules Recall, or just use it to buy yourself a turn against shops, or whatever the case may be. And then we have two more Pyroblast against other blue decks, because they're everywhere, and we get some good use out of Pyroblast. And then four Ravenous Traps. Now, why Ravenous Trap? Well, it's because it's an instant, and so it fills our graveyard really, really... Qu well... It, it fills our graveyard for Crackling Drake as well. It gives it a, a little bit of a buff, a little bit of a boost. It's also asymmetric. It doesn't hurt our own graveyard. Not that that matters much for Crackling Drake, but some other options might. Uh, whereas something like, say, Grafdigger's Cage, that's an artifact. Leyline of the Void, that's an enchantment. This one is an instant. Now, that said, this is temporarily going to get us out from under Dredge. This is temporarily. It's ephemeral. It also doesn't do anything against the Hollow One game plan, though y you have bigger creatures, and a lot of blockers, and can just take a Hollow One. I don't think we're as worried about that. We're worried about stopping the actual combo itself. But I'm trying Ravenous Trap. Feel free to disagree. And that's my Drake's deck. Shoutouts again to Ross Merriam for inspiring this. And if you have any suggestions, leave them down below. Take care, Magic Community. I will see you later. Like the video and bye-bye.